So going ahead to diabetic neuropathies. Again, this is a very vast topic and it's very, very common. Uh, almost 50 to 7, uh, almost 70 percent of patients will have it. So this is a group of diseases that can affect all types of nerves. It could be the larger nerves, small nerves, multi nerves, single nerve. Uh, it could affect any of these nerves. So it can affect the peripheral nerves, autonomic nerves, spinal, any of these can be affected. So as the duration of diabetes increases, as there's a lesser glycemic control, there will be a higher chance of patient developing a neuropathy. So this is the commonest uh, symptomatic complication of diabetes actually, and it can result in foot ulcers and non-traumatic amputations as well. So, uh, diabetic neuropathy, you can, sorry, uh, you can divide it as, it can be subclinical, wherein the patient is asymptomatic, or it could be clinical. Again, in clinical, it can be diffuse or focal. So, when we say diffuse, uh, there are two types. One is a somatic as well as autonomic. So, the somatic uh, type is very common. That is what we mostly see among patients with peripheral neuropathy. They come with a distal symmetrical polyneuropathy. So it's a, uh, they usually come with a glove and stocking pattern. They'll have numbness and tingling sensation in their feet as well as their hands. So the glove and stocking uh, pattern will be there. This is very common and it's one of the commonest uh, presentations. Uh, not so common as the autonomic neuropathy, but this also can happen. So we need to keep it keep in mind there are different symptoms that can happen as different uh, body parts are affected. So it can be cardiovascular, it could be um, uh, gastrointestinal, it can be genitourinary, or it can result in pupil abnormalities also. It can also affect single nerves, like it can be focal. So there can be mononeuropathy. It can affect just the ulnar nerve or just the median nerve or peroneal nerve, things like that. It can result in entrapment syndromes, like a carpal tunnel syndrome, for example. And cranial neuropathies also can happen. So, uh, like I said, the distal symmetric polyneuropathy is very common. So, this is this again can be uh, both in the large or the small fiber neuropathies can happen. So, normally these patients will present with paresthesia, burning sensation, they'll have tingling sensation, numbness, uh, decrease in the joint perception. So, they won't be able to, they won't have a joint sense, uh, joint perception sense will not be there. Typically, the symptoms get worse in the night. So, during the day, they're a little better as the night approaches, they say that their uh, tingling and burning is increasing and the symptoms are getting worse. It, they, they can also have uh, deformities in the foot, like a charcoal foot. This happens because of a, uh, because of the, you know, they lose the uh, sense of proprioception, which is why there can be a abnormal weight distribution that happens on the joint. So that, that can result in a uh, deformity of the foot. Also, sometimes because there's a decreased sensation of pain, which is, uh, you know, one of the most dangerous things that can happen, uh, the sore, the sores or numb areas, they, they go unnoticed. And this can result in foot ulcers, which is why foot care is very, very important in diabetes. So like I said, you could have a large fiber neuropathy or a small fiber neuropathy. The symptoms will be slightly different. So if it's a large fiber that is affected, usually it will be mainly in the lower limb and it will be more of a deeper pain and patient will have wasting of muscles. They can have weakness of muscles and uh, they can have some imbalance. Uh, you know, they can have ataxia. Uh, they'll have a loss of reflexes. Their ankle reflex not will be much lesser and they can have a loss of position sense. All of these things can happen. They can have numbness, pins and needles and all. Small fiber neuropathy uh, is, you know, uh, more causes more symptoms like burning and tingling sensation and everything. This is more of a superficial pain. Uh, feeling like an electric shock, burning sensation can be there. They can have autonomic dysfunction. Other symptoms, associated symptoms can be there like uh, dry skin, loss of sweating, erectile dysfunction, uh, maybe some gastroparesis, things like that. And uh, normally they, their muscle wasting will not be there. That is one thing that differentiates a large fiber neuropathy from a small fiber neuropathy is that they will not have a lot of muscle wasting. So they'll have normal reflexes, normal muscle strength. Uh, but then uh, uh, when you test them, I mean, they'll have more symptoms and uh, they have a more chance of morbidity and mortality as well. So how do we assess these patients? So one is doing a bedside examination. You can do a disability scoring. You can do use a tuning fork. So see uh, if they're having a decreased sense of vibration. You can use a 180 hertz uh, tuning fork. Uh, look for uh, vibration sense. Look for joint perception sense. And uh, you can also do the monofilament test, which is very, very useful when it comes to a diabetic patient to look for sensation. 
uh, normally there are 10 points that are tested. If the patient has a loss of sensation in more than four, then it is quite significant. You will also have to check the ankle jerk. It can be reduced in neuropathies. And uh, you can use a biothesiometer testing if you have the facility in your center. So how do we manage a peripheral a neuropathy? Again, here, uh, to reiterate, I think prevention of progression is very important. So good sugar control. Uh, if, you're, if the patient's sugars are not well controlled, then no matter what you do, their symptoms will not come down. So you have to make sure that their sugars are very well controlled and lifestyle modifications. And in order to control the symptoms, you can use medications like tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, they also use gabapentin, pregabalin, uh, some uh, anti-epileptic medications like topiramate, carbamazepine, all of these can be used. TENS is one of the things that is also tried. It's a, a physiotherapy modality. So that also can help in reducing the neuropathy. Uh, you can use painkillers like Ultraset, which is a tramadol paracetamol combination, capsaicin, ointments, all of these to some extent can help in reducing the symptoms. Uh... So we also have autonomic neuropathies, like I said. So this can affect various systems. So normally if it's affecting the heart, then you can have a silent heart attack. You'll have a myocardial ischemia, but then the patient doesn't understand. The patient doesn't feel any pain. So that is why it gets unnoticed. That's why, you know, sometimes the aptic patients, you'll have a, a sudden massive heart attack because although they might be having chest pain, they might be having angina, but the patient will not be aware of it. So the patient can have exercise intolerance, they can have a resting tachycardia, they can have syncopies like orthostatic hypertension can happen resulting in recurrent syncopal attacks. So these can happen. Many times we just tend to uh, put it as a hypoglycemia, we think oh, probably the patient's sugar went down, that's why the patient became giddy and fell down. But we have to keep this also in mind uh, because this is also a possibility. Also, uh, it can affect the GI system, which is also very common. Uh, there's a delayed gastric emptying that happens. So patient may feel bloated, feels full faster. Patient might have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. So all of this. Um, urinary symptoms can be there. There can be a urinary retention, decreased sensation. Neurogenic bladder can be there. A uh, patient can have uh, also erectile dysfunction, vaginal dryness. All of these things can. Erectile dysfunction is very common among patients with diabetes. So... That's one thing to keep in mind. Also, rather other symptoms, you know, like a dry skin, intolerance to heat, decreased sweating, all of these things are uh, symptoms of the autonomic neuropathy. Uh, also, hypoglycemia unawares is one of the things that happens in autonomic neuropathy. The patients, normally if a patient's sugar is falling, then they'll have symptoms, no? like giddiness, feeling, like I said initially, uh, uh, disorientation, sweating, nervousness, feeling anxious, all of that will be the autonomic symptoms. But then if in this, uh, in this, if a patient has autonomic neuropathy, then they will not have these symptoms. So they will not realize till the sugars have dropped a lot. So the, the warning signs that our body usually gives in such patients, it will not be there. So this is quite risky. So this can make the patient at a very high risk of hypoglycemia because it will go undetected and suddenly there'll be like very slow sugars and it may result in brain damage and things like that. Uh, so again, management is the same. So early detection, periodic follow-up of patients with cardiac disease, especially you have to be careful. And uh, uh, if a patient is having orthostatic hypertension, then you have to keep checking their blood pressure frequently. You can, if a patient is having these gastrointestinal symptoms, you can tell them to be on a low-fat diet. You can tell them to have smaller meals because they tend to feel full faster. Uh, you can tell, tell them to space out their meals, like, you know, have frequent and smaller meals and uh, monitor their blood sugars a, a more uh, strictly. And then you can also use prokinetics in such patients. As well as skin care. Skin care also is very important because dry skin is one of the things that can happen in diabetic uh, autonomic neuropathy. So uh, advise them to use moisturizers and all that to keep their skin more uh, soft. So foot and leg problems is another thing. Like I said, there can be skin changes. There can be calluses on the skin, dry skin, itching. All of these things can happen. There is a sensory loss if a patient is having a peripheral neuropathy. So this can result in dry, cracking feet. So, um, you know, this again could result, could be a risk factor for developing foot ulcers, which can result in gangrene and, you know, resulting in amputation. So that is why foot care is extremely important when it comes to a diabetic patient.
So it's, uh, this is one of the main things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're treating a patient with diabetes. So teach them to, for, you know, inspect their foot. So you can tell them to check their feet uh, every day um, with a mirror, with a, either with a handheld mirror or they can sit in front of the mirror with a chair and then just check because it might be difficult for them to bend their leg and have a look at it, especially in an elderly patient. Also tell them to check their shoes daily, avoid wearing wet shoes or tight shoes. So these are some things that they'll have to keep in mind. Also, whenever they come to you, make sure even if they come for something else, if the patient is diabetic, make sure that you're examining the feet, uh, you're doing a feet examination, at least a superficial examination needs to be done so that, you know, we are not missing out on any undetected ulcers or calluses or corn, things like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then also trimming the toenails regularly and maintaining a full, good uh, foot hygiene. So all of these things are very important. And the, the, the underlying thing is that a good glycemic control is important.